<laughs> hey, sweetie. Hey, girls. Hey, girl. And uh, so I'm just sitting here talking, just watching my baby deers out here. You got the coolest thing. Huh? <laughs> you parked in the shade. <laughs> That's why you're down here. <laughs> what, are you, what are you listening to? What play, you, what's your play? Huh? Little baby. Little baby. <laughs> I thought you'd be listening. I thought I'd be listening to like Joe Rogan or something. <laughs> oh. Hey, Doc, you got lawn stripes. You got lawn stripes, man. Don't you hit my gate. Oh, no, I <laughs> So, bitch, don't you hit my gate. Eventually, I'll turn him into a good red man. <laughs> I'll have him out here deer hunting and all kinds of shit. <laughs> So I am standing here over next to the woods because it is again brutally hot out here. This has been one of those weeks or two weeks actually where we take two steps or one step forward and two steps back and mainly it's due to late afternoon thunderstorms. We have had, you know, you see 20% chance of rain, a thunderstorm comes through and dumps an inch and a half, two inches of rain and it like undoes everything that you were, had just done. <laughs> that's, that's kind of what we're facing out here. So let me tell you what I'll talk about today. This is the time of year where if you have a warm season lawn, this is it, this is your last chance. If you're gonna do any seeding, you know, you need a good six to eight weeks of warm weather. So if you're gonna do any warm seeding, now is the time. Otherwise, you're going into the fall, cooler weather. It's not gonna have enough time to establish. You cool season guys, you're coming up on your time to seed. So as soon as you start to get out of this brutal heat, and once you start to see temperatures, you know, drop low 80s, high 70s, perfect time to seed. Now we cover all this in the lawn guides. So get the lawn guides. There's a website for zoysia grass, Bermuda grass, and for cool season. Over 2 million people have visited these sites. It's an independent website. We don't ask for your information. We don't make you sign up for an email list. You don't download an app. We don't want your information. We're one of the only people that don't want it. We put them up years ago. They're there to use. There's calendars, everything used. What's kind of cool is I'm standing behind the house and right behind the house, I have a field and a barn. If you look, the babies were behind me while I was out here talking and now. And there they are, just bedded down in the little, bedded down the little field over there and they're just, they're very tolerant of Doc. <laughs> like that idiot is always out here shooting videos. <laughs> so <laughs> let me, let me explain what I'm doing in this video. This backyard project, we have had a ton of Bermuda germination, but these afternoon storms combined with this heavy leveling we did created these sand washout areas. And I'm just having a real hard time getting those sand areas to establish. And I'm running out of time. So I told Ryan, he wasn't happy about it. I said, I've ordered a bunch of different seeds and we're gonna do an experiment for you guys mainly, but also, I just want roots in the ground. I want to get roots in this ground back here. Again, I've got a ton of Bermuda, but by the time it starts to really establish, it's probably going to start to taper off. So I've ordered piranha bent grass. I'm going to put some of that. It's almost a fairway putting green kind of grass, and it's very heat tolerant, stress tolerant. I've ordered black beauty, I believe it is, which is a mix of um, a heat resistant, fescue and blue i'm going to put some of that out we do a core aeration and then we use the scarifier to mix all that core because i need some topsoil or organic matter on this 
on top of everything without tearing up this whole lawn back here. Now, I have free water. I'm irrigating off my shallow well over here. My deep well serves the house and we use it for the garden, but the shallow well, so I have free water. I can water as much as I want, but it's really hot. So it's gonna be interesting to see. I've got this seating going on and we're in the 90s. Let's see what happens. Uh, I'll take you out front this morning. That front Bermuda is really looking great, really looking strong. And it has a second germination coming in behind it. That looks really good. Now, when that Bermuda starts to go dormant, because it's a downhill slope, I am gonna go in with an annual ryegrass and I'll do a winter seeding down on that over there. In a second, I'll show you this land clearing project. I'll put up the little shed cabin I think we're gonna put over there. Uh, what else? I'll, well, maybe I'll take you up to the garden. I've got to cut to some fields up there. I'll show you that. We've got a bunch of stuff, but everything keeps getting delayed by these thunderstorms. So let me take you over and show you what I'm talking about All real right. quick. The sun's going to make this hard to understand, but here's our house. And maybe I can put up, I'll put up an aerial view of this area and what we took out. A nasty, thick, full of bugs and snakes. But guy came in now this was a land clearing project we didn't come in for a tree cutting project this is land clearing which means they dig around the tree they push these huge trees over they cut them up they dig out the root balls everything take it out it's an amazing process and if you see him dropping root balls he's knocking the excess dirt off those root balls so we don't leave big holes so this whole area in here which was blocked off now we have this huge pond view down in here and we have this huge cleared area down here. So what I'm thinking about doing, we're gonna come in here, I'm gonna put micro clover, I'm gonna put some rye and make this into a really nice grass area back in here. And then down over in here, I'm thinking about putting a little guest house slash studio down there. And let me put up a picture of what I'm thinking of doing. So some of you guys watch this renovation project and on this renovation project, uh, my shiplap guy was Austin, and I just contacted him and said, hey, would you mind coming over and possibly doing some finishing on this? So maybe I'll have him finish the inside with me, but this is gonna be a cool little project. I think that's, I think that's the next project I'm gonna do because man, it would just be so nice, and the girls are still back there sleeping. So although we've had a lot of frustration with all of this, uh, these big thun, every, it's like every other day, Bam, huge thunderstorm, tons of rain. But let me show you a success out here. And I don't know if it's gonna show up that well this time of day, but I gotta tell you, man, this is just gorgeous. So this is that Bermuda seating. This was nasty. This was a horrid area. And we've come through here, we scraped it, we scraped it, we scraped it, we've seeded and seeded and seeded. And let me tell you what, the grass that you see right now is the old germination and there's another brand new germination you can't see that's only about half an inch long next year this is going to be absolutely good. this morning i came out here and we don't use slow release fertilizers on this lawn out here because it's a down slope and it goes to the pond and so what does that mean that means that if i use a slow release fertilizer out here as it rains and as it rains and as it rains slow release fertilizers don't shut off They'll just sit there and melt and melt and melt and run off. So the only thing we use out here is a fast release. I only use two products. I use Super Juice and I use Green Shocker and that's it. That's all I'm putting on here. This morning I mixed up Super Juice and um, I'm storing it in a bucket and keeping it for up to two weeks, by the way, people keep asking. And I'll come out here and I'll hit it every week. I'll come out here and just spray this with a light coat of Super Juice. It's got iron, humic acid, micros, sea kelp, everything you need, it's so mild. It doesn't matter, it can be 100 degrees and you can come out and spray a warm season grass with it. But man, it's really, it's really taken off nice. And again, this is, this is the old germination here. You can't even see the new germination, which is down in here, that's only about half an inch. So that's looking great. All right, so we've got the billy goat out. What did we forget to do last time, Ryan? Right? at it, clean it up. We forgot to take the dirt out of the cores, so now we gotta clean out the cores. And so I've kind of made a decision back here on this because of all this sandy area, I've got a real good establishment of Bermuda back like here. This over here is a septic. That's 12 inches of leveling mix, which is 70% sand. 
It was kind of stupid of me to do that. I really should have worked in some organic matter, some even if it was potting soil or something, but it's still taken. So this area was pure white sand, and you can see that I've got some really good established Bermuda here. It's not the, the issue. issue I'm having is I don't know that I've got enough time to push this lawn with all these thunderstorms we're having and make this spread enough to look decent. So I'm right at the point where it's still too hot to do my cool season seeding. So I think I'm gonna do an experiment. I'll do an experiment for you guys. I'm gonna put down two products, two seeds. I've got a piranha bent grass, and then I've got one other grass of seed I'm gonna put down. So I just told them on camera that you're going to be pissed when you see what's in the back of my UTV. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not that. So here's what I've got, and this is a real good time to do this. If you plan on doing a seeding, cut your grass down short, come out, do a core aeration, and if you have a scarifier, put down your seed and do a scarification. It's the perfect time to seed. So I said, I know it's probably too hot for some of this grass, but I do have irrigation here. And this is just ideal, man. This is just perfect. I can scarify this up, put down the seed, and let me tell you what. I've got huge amounts of Bermuda here, but I don't think it's gonna really take over until next year. So I need to get something else. I just want roots in the ground, and I don't want to plant an annual rye because it's not gonna be able to take this heat for the next six weeks. So experiment time, here we go. Okay, so Ryan's washing off the aerator. <laughs> he ain't happy about this. This is piranha creeping bent. The seeds are extremely fine. Now bent grass is called bent grass basically because it doesn't grow straight up. It actually kind of bends over and grows that way. That's why we use it on our putting green. But I'm gonna put some out here. I think it'll, it's supposed to be heat and drought tolerant along with the Black Beauty, which is a mix of fescues and blues, I believe. And uh, I'm just gonna hit it both out here. Again, I just wanna cover this place with roots in the ground. I'm having a problem with too much washout right now. Even though I have a ton of Bermuda out here and it's gonna establish next year, it's gonna take over this other stuff, but Right now, I gotta get something else down. This is almost a putting green slash fairway kind of seed. And I wanna show you something. I wanna show you just how fine that seed is. I don't know if you can see it on camera. But you can see just how fine that seed is. It's like dust. It's just like dust. So you can see I'm barely scratching the surface. When you come in here and you look on these bare spots, I'm barely touching it. There are some spots like over here where I'm getting a little bit deeper. See that? <clears throat> but overall, the main thing I'm doing is I'm just trying to get these core plugs actually chopped up and get this seed mixed in a little bit.
Oh man, that'll do a job on your back. That was about almost an hour and a half, two hours of cutting with this thing. Hey Doc, you got lawn stripes. You got lawn stripes, man. Those lawn stripes are just awesome. It's nice to have everything, everything is cut. <laughs> all 40 acres is all cool and clear here. I didn't cut it short. I almost treat this like a lawn where um, I cut this down to about seven, maybe eight inches. And this is all clover, brassica, rye. It's a mix in here. Man, it looks good. And the upper field looks good too, so. Anyways. I'm gonna check on my garden, on the wood chips that we put out here. And then I'm gonna go cut that, finish cutting that orchard. And then I'm gonna go get out of these soaking wet clothes and relax for a bit. So, now starts the watering game. I'm, I'm really happy with my decision out here. I know that the Bermuda was gonna take over over the next four to six weeks. It was already establishing, but I know what's gonna happen. What's gonna happen in about six weeks is my temperatures are gonna start to drop down, I guarantee it. And then this Bermuda is gonna slow down and it's not gonna be strong enough. So let's see what happens. Again, I love to do this experimentation, see what happens, show you guys the results. Now, tomorrow we'll be coming out here and I'll be putting a bunch of dirt booster down here. Why? You probably should know the answer to that. Organic matter, because I'm real sandy out here mycorrhizal fungi for a new seeding germination i'll probably even put a light coat of pgf complete maybe green chakra i'm not sure but i definitely want to keep hitting that front area i want to keep hitting that hitting that front area with dirt booster i want to get that organic that mycorrhizal fungi while everything is kind of still warm this warm temperature is when you want to use it so anyways guys if you're going to do a seeding project think about doing at the same time cut it down short do a core aeration. If you have a scarifier, you can rent a scarifier, put your seed down, scarify it in, you'll be good to go. Now it's just a matter of watering. Talk to you later. Dot.